So then, Gurji, take us through then the history of that going from this four sets of papers, yeah. sets of papers that you've written um, that are more mathematical in nature, and how does that turn into the notion that you're going to build a company? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just sort of to back up, right, as Gunnar said, around the year 2000 or so, uh, actually DARPA and NSF realized that the way people did science had changed. They, they realized that people had started doing science by creating new large complex data sets, right? As opposed to the past where people would create confirmatory data sets, people had started creating exploratory data sets. And new science would happen when they discovered something new from those exploratory data sets. And so they had this idea that people who were doing the best science or creating the best data sets were probably not the best people to analyze those data sets. Right? They felt that they might draw incomplete or incorrect conclusions. And so they, they sort of wanted to find a brute force way of approaching this problem. They said, could you compute your way out of this problem? And so to that end, they started financing research efforts in fundamental mathematics. And uh, topological data analysis, the research that we were involved in, was one such effort. So academically, as Anne pointed out, we were very successful based on the same core set of ideas we published in areas as broad as image compression to neuroscience to cancer research to protein folding. And uh, so by the time we were done with the research, we were pretty certain that we could actually have a meaningful impact in the world, right? We knew that the, the sort of, the process of taking a more automated approach to taking large sets of data and converting it into insights would have a lot of value. And we knew that we did not want to do it within academia. So we published all of our research, left Stanford, uh, at least I did, with, with Harlan, our other co-founder. And, uh, and we started building Ayasti. And uh, when we started out in 2008, we did not have a product, right? So we had all this research, and uh, it was a challenge to see where might we apply this research. So basically for the next two and a half years, we did not grow the company significantly, right? We were still, we remained as small as possible. And uh, I met Anne during, the, during our first, uh, I guess second year of operations in 2009 because at one point, the three of us basically, you know, we had a decision as to who's going to be the CEO, and no one wanted to be it, so I guess I was, I was stuck being the CEO. And I realized that I knew nothing about running a company. So I, I started taking uh, the Stanford ETL lectures, you should pay attention, it actually helps. Um, and uh, we took a class by Steve Blank, uh, which was talking about entrepreneurship, that's how I met Anne. And uh, what Steve Blank, uh, the one thing that he said which stuck with us was basically get out of the building. And uh, as soon as we had a prototype ready, we got out of the building. So I wrote another program to spam, Stanford alumni at this time, and <laughs> we went out and met with anyone in a business setting who would take a meeting with us. So over about a three month period, we met with some 40 or 50 odd people in a large number of industries and uh, got thrown out of roughly half the offices. And uh, to their credit, actually, uh, you know, those, those people that we would go meet, we were not the best at explaining what we did. And uh, so we would go into these meetings and talk about a bunch of math, and people wouldn't get anything. Uh, but the other half of the meetings were very significant, because we came back with a prioritized list of use cases, and people would say, oh, if only you could make this work for this problem in my organization, it's going to be worth this much. This is what I spent. These are the resources. And uh, after like three months worth of searching, we had a, we had a long list of use cases. Uh, also, I remember there was one point where uh, someone said, well, you know, I'll write you a $50,000 check if, uh, <laughs> if you'll just give it to me right now. And the point where from a venture capitalist perspective, you start frothing at the mouth is Gurjeet said, I, don't, I think this is worth far more than $50,000. <laughs> and then he left the room. Yep. <laughs> In fact, that, that contact I actually had met after an ETL lecture. So there you go. Your customer <laughs> may be in the room. Yeah. So at that point, I, I went back to Anne. We said, look, Anne, uh, you know, we've had a lot of fun working with you. I've learned a lot. I certainly learned quite a bit from Anne. And uh, you know, at this point, we are ready to actually start you know, pouring some resources into the company and growing it. I know what to do at this point.